This next chapter gets into geometry and the first section in your textbook is really important to understand um, because we're going to be using this throughout the entire chapter. So the first section covers congruent figures. This may be a review for you. It might be new to you. Whether it is a review or it's new, please make sure that you're taking notes, especially on the vocabulary so that you can have that available to you throughout the entire chapter. So to start with our vocabulary, we're just going to look at congruent figures, which are objects that have the same size and the same shape. So here I have two triangles, which are obviously the same shape, and they are the same size. Now, matching angles are called corresponding angles, and we're going to get more into this in a little bit, but just as a quick glance, angle B and angle E are matching angles. How we know that is if we took this triangle and we placed it right on top of this triangle, the two angles are going to match up. That's how we figure out what corresponding angles are. Matching sides are called corresponding sides. So here I have color coded for you the corresponding sides on these two figures. Now one, one quick thing to say about congruent figures is in these examples you're always going to see the shape, these two shapes, but these two shapes don't necessarily have to be facing the same direction. They could be a reflection of one another. One could be rotated. It doesn't matter what they, what, what position they're in. What matters is if they're the same size and the same shape. That's what makes them congruent figures. So just keep that in mind. That's going to be important to know for this entire chapter. So now we're just going to take more of a look at corresponding parts and we're going to see how we name those corresponding parts. We're going to start with the angles. So again, if I took this triangle and I placed it right on top of this triangle to match the angles up, I'm going to see what those corresponding angles are. So angle A and angle D are corresponding angles. And this is how we would label it on our figure by using these little marks. Angle B and angle E are corresponding angles. Now because we used one of these lines here, I have to use two to show my next set of corresponding angles. And finally, angle C and angle F are corresponding angles. And again, since I used one mark here and two marks here, now I'm going to use three marks to classify those corresponding angles. Now if we want to look at corresponding sides, we're going to do the same thing. Line AB and line DE are corresponding sides. We're going to use the same idea when we identify that on the figures. We're going to use this little tick mark. Angle, or I'm sorry, line BC and line EF are corresponding sides, and line AC and line DF are corresponding sides. So these marks, I know you're familiar with them. These are how, if I just were to give you these two shapes, this is how you would read what the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides are, is by identifying these marks and which corresponds with what. Now something to note is these symbols that I have here. The reason I use this symbol right here is for the word angle. Instead of writing the word angle out, I just use that symbol and then put A. And same with over here, this line above AB, this is just the symbol for the word line. So this reads line AB. And again, it's just something to use so that we don't have to write the word line. So now that we've talked about the corresponding parts, we're going to look closer at these two figures that we just identified, and we're going to 
take a look and see that because they have corresponding sides and because they have corresponding angles, that is why these two figures are congruent. So all congruent figures are going to have those corresponding sides and angles. In the example that we just completed, we proved that these two triangles are congruent to each other. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And the way that we would write that using symbols is just like this. Triangle ABC, this is the symbol for is congruent to triangle DEF. So now that you're finished with this video, you're going to go back to my website. You're going to click on the second link as, you, as you've done before, and you're going to fill out the Google form. Remember that your results come directly to me electronically, so you don't have to print your results out and bring them with you to class. Also, please remember that you bring your notes and any questions that might have come up during this video with you to class so we can use it as a discussion point. Remember that you have this video available to you so that you can go back and rewatch it if you need to. Um, and again, be ready to come into class with a great understanding of this. Um, if you are confused, don't worry, we'll talk about it. We'll get you up to par, but we are going to take this a little bit deeper and solve some application questions.